Hi, in this video I'll show you how I made his stylized fantasy chest, starting in Blender and finishing in Substance Painter, step by step from the first shapes to the final textures. Let's get into it. This video has a full-length version available for members only, with no speed up and no audio. If you'd like to watch the entire process in real time, you can join the channel. I started by using simple shapes to build the base of the chest. This helps me to get a clear idea of the final result before adding any extra details. I had a few references open on my other screen just to guide me on what elements to include now and what to leave for later. Even though it looks like I'm modeling the inside, this chest is static. It won't open. So I just didn't want to leave open geometry because that can cause problems when remeshing later. I'll remove all of that extra geometry later when I make the low poly. I've made other fantasy chests before, but no one like this, so it was a bit of a challenge. I like the result, but there are still things I would improve in future versions. Still, every project helps you grow. This chest has some ornamental shapes, so modeling certain areas was a bit tricky. I had to redirect the edges carefully to keep the geometry clean and organized. Even though I later triangulate everything for the final low poly version, I still try to work as clean as possible because it is a good practice to keep a nice workflow. Even if we don't plan to use the high poly model directly, it also helps in case we want to show the high poly mesh in our portfolio later. In my case, it is not perfect, but I learned a lot while making it, so I really encourage you to try things you have never done before, because that's how we improve. To model the ornaments, I just created a plane and shaped the design flat, and then I used it to cut into the chest using the knife project tool. After that, I manually connected the vertices to keep the shading clean and the geometry under control. For the sculpting, I use the same brushes I normally use, the scrape brush, either Blender's default or the one from the R brush pack. I also use the crease art brush to add good grain details, and you don't need to add every single detail during the sculpting process because we can always add more in Substance Painter later. It is up to your own creativity. If you want, you can use also some of my brush pack. There are a few free versions available on my Comroad page. For the optimization, I used to reduce the polygons as much as I could. 
since this person is the one that will be used in a final project, it has to be well optimized, even with LODs if needed. Because the model has some organic shapes, it is normal to get a lot of curved details, which adds a lot of geometry. And that's why we need to be smart with shading. In Blender, if we add a sharp edge to every seam we have and use the Weighting Normals modifier, we can keep the shading looking clean, even with a low poly mesh. One interesting step that I see many artists skip when making a 3D model is creating an ID map. I explained this in more detail in my video Master Baking from Blender to Substance Painter, but the idea is simple. You assign a different color to each part of your model, and then in Substance Painter you can use those colors as masks. This gives you way more control when applying materials and helps you to avoid painting everything by hand. In Substance Painter, I do the bake at 8K resolution using mesh names with proper suffixes. I also import my model with ID maps so I can bake them as well. And that's it, the model is now fully ready for texturing. This whole process is mostly creative, but I always start with my stylized base material. Remember that you can download these for free from the link in the video description. Then I assign base colors using my references as guide and after that I add some extra details like a soft grading shadow to give it more depth, I'm in occlusion to avoid flat areas and a few final filters to push the stylist look. The latest version of Substance Painter has some really cool effects so I like to experiment with those too.
And here's the final result. I honestly hope you like it. I'm happy with the final result, but I know there's still room to improve. Still, the only way to get better is to keep practicing. So just keep making stuff. That's how we grow. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.